Today we're going to talk about how to use SolidWorks to easily design threads for functional 3D printed parts. The first example here is this water bottle design. We're going to design a cap for this bottle that will thread on. This file is a step file, so I can't edit the thread profile. I don't really know if it's a standard thread type or just some arbitrary size the original designer came up with. But luckily, the method we're going to go through will work in almost any situation and is very easy to execute. In the interest of time, I'm going to run through this, but this is a video, so of course pause and rewind if you need to. I'm going to begin by creating the basic shape of the cap. Here I'll create a sketch on the front plane. I'll lay out some rough measurements here as well. Now I want to keep a small gap near the bottom here so that the cap doesn't bottom out on the bottle before the threads. Just round off this corner here, eight millimeters is good. And let's revolve this around the center axis here. We want a separate body, so make sure you turn off merge result. Okay, now we have the cap. Let's make it a different color. In order for me to see the threads, I'm gonna hide the cap. Let's switch for the surfaces tool tab. Select the offset surface tool. We'll be printing this on an FDM machine. 0.3 millimeters is a good amount of gap. Now select the cylinder here and go around and select all the surfaces of your threads. Make sure you don't leave any holes. Okay, hide the bottle. We need to close off one side of this. Let's use the fill surface tool. Merge that so it creates one surface. Unhide the cap and select the cut with surface tool. The little arrow here shows which direction it is going to cut. Reverse that to cut inside and select the cap on its target body. We can hide this surface now and voila! We have female threads inside this cap. I like this method because we can easily go back into the feature tree and easily change that surface offset. If we discover the thread fit is too loose or too tight, just adjusting that one number will tighten or loosen the fit accordingly. Very easy way to make quick adjustments. I'm going to add some cuts around here to grip this cap well. There, that'll do. Awesome, and there we have our cap. We can see a nice even clearance all the way around the threads. Perfect. Let's bring this cap into a separate file so we can export to an STL for printing. Now let's see how quickly I can get one of these whipped up. We'll be printing this on the Fortis 250MC to test for form and function. I've opened the Insight program and I have the STL for the cap, so let's open that. Let's orient this with the top side up. We can see our modeler configuration. Yes, 250MC. I'm not picky about resolution right now, so a 13,000 slice height is just fine. Again, for speed, low density will save us lots of time. Smart supports is good. And let's slice it. Great, that was quick. Let's look at our slices. We can see Insight generated supports all inside the threads here. 
I'm confident that this will print out well without support, so let's delete those. All we have to do is go to delete. Select system support curves, drag out a box covering all the threads. There, the curves can be deleted and highlighted in white. Let's hit okay, and they're gone. Now we just rerun generate toolpaths. That's one of the great things about the Insight program that comes with all the Fortis machines. It gives you complete control over everything about your 3D print. By eliminating these supports, we can reduce print time even further and also eliminate the need for removing them from the printed part. Not to mention less material usage, meaning lower cost. Now let's hit the send to printer button. Wait, wow. Only an hour and seven minutes? Great. Let's send it to print, I'll take lunch, and it'll be done by the time I get back. Now I'm going to walk through another method I like to use when incorporating threaded holes into 3D printed parts. Here I have a two-part mold that we'll be using in a future blog post. The mold will be completely 3D printed on one of our high-resolution PolyJet 3D printers. These printers are capable of producing very fine details, in this case, fully printed screw threads. This can save an assembly time later as we won't need to tap the holes by hand. Directly 3D printed threads are a great solution for end use parts and functional prototypes. The mold halves are held together by a screw in each corner. The screw will clamp the top half of the bottom half of the mold by threading into parts shown in orange. I've decided to use an M6 screw size for this mold. Let's separate the mold. Here are the four bodies that we need to add threaded holes to. For this method, I'm going to go to McMaster Car to find my screw size. McMaster is an enormous library of parts, many of which have downloadable 3D models. Using existing models can save you lots of design time, helping you get a finished product sooner. Let's navigate to screws. I'll choose a hex cap screw. Scroll down to find my size, M6. I'll choose a length that is more than long enough for what I need. I'll just be using the thread geometry. Any of these should work. I'll choose this high strength steel version. Click the part number and a little CAD icon should show up. Click that and it brings us to this page. We can see the nicely modeled threads. Let's make sure SolidWorks is chosen for the file type and click download. I've already saved this model, so let's go back to SolidWorks. Inside the part file, we'll use the insert part command. Now I'm gonna select the screw model I just downloaded. This will bring it into our current part file as a separate solid body. Confirming the threads are accurately modeled is a time saver. Place it anywhere. We'll align it to where we want it with the move copy bodies command. Select the screw as the body you want to move. Now, similar to assembly mates, you can use the tool to align the screw to the hole by selecting the two cylindrical faces. Click add. Now choose the depth of the screw by adding a distance mate. 12 millimeters of depth should be good. Hit add and then the green check mark. Before I combine this, I'm going to scale up the screw slightly to account for some clearance between the printed part and the screw. Now my last method, the offset surface method, didn't work here. So I'm using a different method. I'm going to scale up the screw by 2%. Select the scale tool and scale about centroid 1.02 times scale. I can now use the combine feature to subtract the screw from the orange captive nut. Select the nut as the main body and the screw as the body to subtract. Clicking the green check mark, you're left with your original model, now with perfectly modeled screw threads that can be functional in your 3D printed model. We've just covered two super easy ways to incorporate working threads into your designs. The methods we've discussed are useful tools for anyone who designs or manufactures parts. They aren't just limited to the people with 3D printers. You've learned you can use CAD data from McMaster CAR to model standard metric and even NPT threads, and a quick way to create mating threads on an, an existing design. Between the two methods discussed in this video, you're able to add more depth and value to your designs. For those of you that do have 3D printers, this is a great tool for adding functionality to proof of concept, marketing, or end-use parts. Thanks for joining.